Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am your host, Sarah, and I want to wish you a happy Tuesday. I hope that your week is going well so far, that you survived Monday, and that your week is cruising right along, and you're headed toward the weekend again. I know it's a little early in the week to be saying that, but hey, it's always good to have plans, right? And speaking of plans, today happens to be my hubby's birthday, so I am excited about that. Happy birthday, hubby. Uh, it's wonderful to have a partner to celebrate with, and even though we don't actually know what we're doing yet, but we'll figure that out. We sometimes are really, really great at planning birthdays, and other years we kind of just take it as it comes, and this is one of those take it as it comes years, so... We'll see what happens. No matter what, we'll be together and we will celebrate. So that will be lovely. In terms of the book review podcast, since uh, we are not the birthday podcast, we are the book review podcast. And I have another author interview today. I have two author interviews this week, uh, one today on Tuesday and then another on Thursday. So two episodes this week rather than the one on Wednesday. And I'm so excited that I've been speaking with more authors. Today's uh, interview is with author Lorena Hughes, who wrote the book The Sisters of Alameda Street. And let me read you the blur, the description of that book. When Milena Sevilla's tidy, carefully planned world collapses following her father's mysterious suicide, she finds a letter, signed with an A, that reveals that her mother, who she thought dead, is very much alive and living in San Isidro, a quaint town tucked in the Andes Mountains. Intent on meeting her, Milena arrives at Alameda Street and meets four sisters who couldn't be more different from one another, but who share one thing in common— all of their names begin with an A. To avoid a scandal, Milena assumes another woman's identity and enters her home, their home to discover the truth. Could her mother be Amanda, the iconoclastic widow who opens the first tango nightclub in a conservative town? Anna, the ideal housewife with a less-than-ideal past? Abigail, the sickly sister in love with a forbidden man? Or Alejandra, the artistic introvert scarred by her cousin's murder? But living a lie will bring Milena additional problems, such as falling for the wrong man and loving a family she may lose when they learn of her deceit. Worse, her arrival threatens to expose long-buried secrets and a truth that may wreck her life forever. Set in 1960s Ecuador, The Sisters of Alameda Street is a sweeping story of how one woman's search for the truth of her identity forces a family to confront their own past. That is the description of The Sisters of Alameda Street by Lorena Hughes. And this book is so well done. I really enjoyed it. You've got the mystery. You've got these amazing family dynamics. This is a very complex fa complex family with a lot of secrets. Each of the sisters has a secret. They're all hiding something. And there's these very again, complex family dynamics. And Milena, who's the outsider but who is you know, probably one of their daughters, but she's posing now under this um, mistaken but then taken on identity so that she continues to be an outsider, really begins to learn more and more about them. And she starts digging into this past, trying to figure out if one of these four women really is her mother. And so you get that mystery, you get Milena kind of trying to figure out her own sense of identity and her own sense of family as she interacts with these women. You get the struggles that all of the sisters have gone through and continue to go through. So you get evolution of all of the characters. And it really, it's just, it's wonderfully written. The characters, again, are so rich. And I really, really enjoyed this. So enough from me. Let's go now to that interview with author Lorena Hughes. Good morning, Lorena. Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. I'm really excited to have you here. Hi, Sarah. Thank you so much for having me. 
Well, we're going to talk about your book soon, but uh, I'd just like to get to know you a little bit so my readers can learn a little bit about you. Uh, whatever you're, you're comfortable sharing, we'd love to hear. All right. Well, I was born in Ecuador. I um, grew up in, um, in, the, in the capital, which is Quito. Uh, I went to the same school all my life, from preschool to 12th grade. And then when I graduated from there, I went to, uh, I came here to the United States to go to college. I came to the University of New Mexico, um, and I studied fine arts. Um, but later on, as I progressed in my studies, I figured that I wanted to do commercial art. I, just, I didn't want to be just an artist. So I started taking some photojournalism classes and um, advertising, and so... I ended up having a double major with mass communication and journalism. Mm -hmm. um, after that, I took some computer design classes because there was not a whole lot in my department at the time. And I ended up working in advertising and graphic design, a little bit of newspaper illustration. So that basically, that's my background. Thank you. I really appreciate you sharing that. We are here to talk about your book. This is your debut novel, correct? Yes. Yes, and it's the Sisters of Alameda Street. So tell us a little bit about the book. All right. So the Sisters of Alameda Street is a generational saga with uh, a little bit of a mystery going on. It's set in a small South American town in the early 60s. And it is the story of Malena, who is a girl who grew up with her father moving from one city to another. And all her life, she believed that her mother had died in childbirth. Well, one day her father commits suicide and she's desperate for answers. So in her search for answers, she finds a letter from her mother uh, that proves that her mother was, is still alive. So um, she decided, and she lives in this small town that she's never heard of in Ecuador called San Isidro. So she takes the next bus and goes to the address in the envelope, but she has a problem. And the problem is she doesn't know her mother's name. All she knows is that her first name starts with an A, uh, but when she arrives to the address on the letter, uh, first of all, they confuse her with someone else, mm -hmm. and she kind of goes along because she's trying to figure out who this family is and everything, and then she meets all these women, and all their names start with an A. They're four sisters. <laughs> yes. So she takes advantage of the confusion because she senses tension in the house and weird behavior. So she doesn't just want to blurt out, well, who is my mother? So she just kind of, she's very careful and decides to just let, let it like flow a little bit like, um, and assumes this other identity and tries to find her mother. And basically that is the premise of the book. Mm -hmm. uh, the story has two timelines, which is the present, 1962, which is Malena's story digging through clues, talking to people, and having her own story uh, developed. And the, the sister stories that are told from the late 1930s to the early 40s, and each one of the sisters has a connection to Malena's father, so any one of them could be her mother. Right, right. So um, why this time period in particular? Well, I've always been fascinated with the mid-20th century. I just love the history of the times, the fashion, the music. The other thing I liked about it was that um, women were very restricted at the time, and especially in South America and patriarchal societies and small towns, reputation was everything. Mm -hmm. So a little slip like that would be a big shame for the family. So they would have covered up. So that's why it was a, a natural time. In addition to that, my mom was about the same age as Malena in 1962, and I always found it fascinating. When I looked at photographs of her and she told me stories about her youth around that time, I thought I just thought it was a fun time. I know you you grew up in Ecuador. Are there other autobiographical elements in this story or the setting or the characters? Um, not in the plot itself. That's all fiction. But some of the characters have my, some of my traits. For example, uh, you know, Amanda loves to dance and I like to dance. Uh, Alejandra is a painter and I was a painter in my teenage years um, and college years. Anna is very focused on her family and I'm a little bit like that. 
um, Abigail, um, she's, she was very romantic and, you know, in her teenage years and that's kind of how I was too back then. Um, and I guess with the protagonist, I have in common that aside from the curls, <laughs> um, she likes to cook, you know, she likes to cook, she loves film. So I guess I, I gave each women, important women in the story, a, a little bit about me. Okay. Um, the other thing is, uh, some of the interactions between the sisters, specifically Anna and Amanda, is is drawn from my own relationship with one of my best friends in, in my teenage years. So the way they act with each other. Um, as far as setting, um, the the town where I set my story is a fictional town that is inspired by two real cities. And one of them is my dad's hometown, uh, which is called Ambato. And next to it or nearby there's another town which is famous for its hot springs Mm -hmm. and so I kind of combined both both towns because I wanted to use some of the elements of of the hot springs uh and in my subplots and I'm sorry you know I hate to do this but I do have to interrupt with our first break of the podcast but when we come back Lorena will be talking about the research that she did for this book why she decided to set it in this in this particular time period and more about the story so stay tuned and we'll be right back with the GSMC book review podcast Do you want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do? All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. Let's get right back to that interview with Lorena Hughes, author of The Sisters of Alameda Street. In terms of, because it is a, a different, a slightly different time period, how much research did you do into the time periods that you were writing about? I did a lot of research. Um, I, first of all, I had to research the, the fashion. Uh, the, the, what I had to, uh, for three different timelines, the 30s, the 40s, and the six, early 60s. Uh, I had to understand, you know, the materials and fabrics they used. Um, I learned things like, for example, that the pompadour was only used in the 40s, not in the 30s. So I, I had to research underwear, all kinds of things to give it the right atmosphere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I also researched cars, transportation in Ecuador at the time. Um, I had to research the hot springs so I could get, come up with the names and the perfect location. Uh, I, I, I have visited that ta- that area of the country, so I'm familiar with it, but I hadn't been to all the places that I mentioned. And um, I guess also music. Music is something I had to research a lot because um, one of the ongoing themes of my novel is tango dancing. I was just going to ask so about that. I, yeah. So I read a lot about Carlos Gardel, uh, who is like considered the the king of tango. Um, I, I went to the tango festival in my in my town where I live here. I talked to a dan- tango dancer. Uh, I watched n- many videos of YouTube <laughs> dancers, and so that was fun. Yeah, that sounds really fun. Do you do the tango? Do you dance the tango? Uh, very little. I just learning very basic. I I do more salsa and, mm-hmm. and merengue, cumbia. Those those dances are a lot easier. Yes, the, <laughs> for the, me. the tango looks very intense and complicated. Oh yes, and there's so many steps. It's hard to. It's it's hard. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't but know if beautiful. I have the right balance for it. I feel I feel like I would just <laughs> topple over. And you know, uh, it really is a different kind of move that I'm used to because in uh, in those tropical dances, you have to move your hips a lot. And in tango, they tell you, stop moving the hips. Oh, you know? y- yes. <laughs> it's all about the legs and the footwork. Right. So your muscle memory is wrong. Yes, it's all wrong. Yes. <laughs> 
Um, in terms of the book itself or the writing process, did you have um, a favorite part of the story or the characters or even the writing? I, I would say that I loved the process of writing the book um, because I, I don't know if, if you know this, but it took me many, many years to write this book. I started it. The idea came to me in 1998. Oh, okay. You know, and I started and I started writing the sister stories in notebooks. Um, and then throughout the years, you know, as I had kids and I worked, I, I, I just kind of kept, kept coming back to these characters until in like 2005, I decided to write it as a novel in English because it had first been um, conceived as a soap opera. I wanted it to be a, like a telenovela. Oh, okay. And so, uh -huh. so it, it has gone through so much transition, uh, so many changes, subplots have been cut off. But I think that it has gained a lot with time because when I first started, I was Melinda's age almost, and now I'm like the mother's age. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it ha I ha it, it, this book has kind of traveled with me, you know, and I think that the characters have uh, earned so much depth throughout the years and, and just like the story, it, it's the process itself is what I've enjoyed the most. Yeah. Did you find it a different experience when you, st did you decided to write it in English? Yes, I first started writing it, as I said, as a telenovela, so it was in Spanish, and it was just kind of summaries, because, you know, soap operas are so long, you can't really, like, write it all the episodes. Right. So it was, like, little summaries, and but it, it comes out really easy for me to write it in Spanish. Um, in English, it, it took me longer, because I have to look up words, I have, I need my critique partners to check all my, you know, my ESL mistakes and all my prepositions. Um, the other thing is that um, Spanish, uh, English is a more direct language. So uh, you can't really write really long sentences like you would in Spanish. Uh, so I had to fix that because my readers would be like, you have to cut the sentence in two or three. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so run-on sentences are different. Okay. Yes. Interesting. Yes. So you said you began writing it almost 20 years ago, um, and you you know, you were an artist in your teenage years and translated that into your, your college career, which then kind of morphed into more commercial art. So you began writing the story in notebooks as kind of a telenovela. Um, had you ever really thought about writing a novel before that? Um, not really. I mean, I, it's weird how I had started writing I guess in my early teens and I didn't realize that it would be a book, like that was my vocation. I just did it for fun. And so I, I, I never thought of it as being a published author. I just thought, Oh, I have this really cool idea. Wouldn't it be cool if they made this into a movie or something? And I just started writing it, but without any goals of publishing or nothing like that, because I, I was convinced that I was going to be a visual artist. Mm hmm so I never even considered that that would be a possibility until life kind of took me in this direction because I, I had my babies, they were little, and I didn't want to be, you know, I wanted to be with them. So I would, I just started, it become really strong vocation then. Mm -hmm. Okay. Since you kind of, you kind of came at this in a different way from some other authors that I've talked to, do you just write when the mood strikes or do you try to keep a certain schedule? I try to keep a schedule. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm not always so regular, but I do try to keep it to, I, I try to sit down every day and write a little bit, but sometimes it, it will depend on the project. If I'm very immersed in a project, I might take the computer with me and write, you know, at different places at different times. Mm -hmm. But, but I, I, I do try to do it very frequently. Okay. And uh -huh. you said, um, that you studied graphic design. Did you, uh, have a hand in designing the cover? Because the cover is beautiful. I know. I love the cover. No, I didn't. Well, what happened was my editor asked me to create a mood board, um, which basically was tell me all the covers that you like and what kind of image you would like and things like that. And so I created a Pinterest page that I shared with him. And I chose all my covers that I liked from all the books that I liked. And they were really great about fi figuring out where I was going with my idea. And and they translated it beautifully. I mean, I couldn't have done it so beautiful. I had tried making the cover for this book years ago when I was just playing around, 
And I never came up with such a good cover like they did. Yeah. So I was very happy with it. Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah, I love the cover. Um, well, the red shoes just, I think, are my favorite part. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Sorry, I bought shoes like those for my book launch. Perfect. <laughs> And I had the skirt made too, the, the polka dot skirt. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. I love that. It, what's next? Are you working on anything right now? Yes, um, I'm revising another uh, another novel. It's uh, it's also a historical mystery. This is more of a murder mystery, but it's very similar in format to The Sisters in that it's told, um, you know, it has a protagonist that is trying to find out who wants to kill her, basically. But then there's all the sisters and family that she didn't know. Um, it's set in the in 1919 in a small town in Ecuador called Little Paris. It's actually the real name. I mean, that's the nickname of that town because a lot of French entrepreneurs bought cocoa plantations there at the time. And um, so my, my protagonist inherits one and um she has to go and but when on her way there they try to kill her and then so it's it's kind of in the developing it's already written the full first draft mm -hmm. it's written but i am so now i'm in the process of rewriting and revising and all that oh it sounds really interesting thank you for sharing that it is time for me to once again rudely interrupt the interview for our second break of the podcast. But when we come back, I'll be asking Lorena one of my favorite questions, which is who are her favorite authors? And my to, to be read list will just get longer and longer. So stay tuned and we'll be right back with the GSMC book review podcast. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. Here is the conclusion to my interview with author Lorena Hughes. Do you, um, do you like to read? Oh, yeah. So who are your favorite authors? I have a very eclectic taste. Um, I like authors that write complex stories. Mm -hmm. uh, like, for example, I like Carlos Ruiz Zafón, you know, the Spanish author. I like Kate Morton. Um, I loved the Elena Ferrante novels, the my the Napolitan uh, for the four books that she wrote, uh, my brilliant friend, and that I read Le Leon Moriarty, Jodi Picoult. Um, right now, I'm kind of in the in the mood for psychological thrillers. Um, you know, the, the books with girl on the title. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm kind of hooked on those. Um, but I also like lighter fiction. You know. Yeah. Like, uh, I don't know, The Rosie Project, Where'd You Go, Bernadette. I just read a lot of things. It depends on my mood, I guess. Right. Okay. Do you have any advice for aspiring authors? Um, I would tell them to keep sending those query letters. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to get rejections. And what I did is the day I got a rejection, I would send another letter to someone else. Okay. That would be my advice to just keep, keep doing it. Mm -hmm. Keep trying. Right. In terms of the internet, uh, do you have where can people find you on social media? Um, so I have a, a Twitter account. It's uh, the handle is Sister Lorena. Um, I have a Facebook author page, and it's Lorena Hughes Author. Um, I have Goodreads and BookBub, but so you can just search by, by the 
I guess by the the title of the book, mm-hmm. you can find me there. And I do have a website, which is www.lorena-hughes.com. Thank you. I appreciate that. That is helpful. Thank you. And is there anything else that we haven't covered that you w- that you wanted to talk about in terms of your books or your writing? Anything that we haven't talked about? Well, I, I guess I would like to people to know that my main goal is to keep them entertained. But I like to leave them with a little something to remember and think about. Um, I, I love it if they would, you know how sometimes you read a book and you it's over, once it's over, you keep thinking about, well, I wonder what happened to those characters after. And Absolutely. Yeah. I would like that. Yeah. I would like them to, I would like to leave them with that. And also with, uh, this is the kind of book that my intent was that you read it once. And then you figure out the mystery, but then you read it again and and find all these little things that you didn't notice when you were reading it the first time. That's how I write the story with that goal in mind. Yes. Okay, that's great. Um, well, th- those were my questions. Um, so I really want to thank you for taking the time to speak with me this morning. I enjoyed talking to you so much. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on your show. Oh, you're welcome. And I do want to say thank you once again to my guest, author Lorena Hughes, for taking the time out of her weekend to talk to me about The Sisters of Alameda Street, her debut novel. As I said at the beginning, I really, really enjoyed the story. I enjoyed the characters. I really liked trying to get to the bottom of the mystery with Milena. And as you can see, Lorena really did put a lot of her heart and soul into this book and you can just you can tell her passion for her writing and this story through the words that she gave during that interview. So thank you to Lorena. Thank you to you for joining me for another author interview. I hope you will tune in again on Thursday when I will be speaking with author Laura Heffernan about her reality star series. It's a lot of fun, so you should definitely join us for that conversation. In the meantime, you can find all of our podcasts at www.gsmcpodcast.com. You can download those podcasts on SoundCloud, Google Play, Stitcher, and and iTunes, and you can follow us on social media. I would love for you to interact with me on social media. Send me your questions, send me your thoughts, whatever you have. You can find us at um, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Tumblr. Once again, thank you so much for joining me as I spoke with author Lorena Hughes about her book, The Sisters of Alameda Street. Join me again on Thursday for my interview with author Laura Heffernan about her reality star series. In the meantime, go out there and get yourself lost in a good book. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www gsmcpodcast.com Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program. <laughs>